Good morning, Light Lions. I hope all of you had a wonderful week. I know it's coming towards the end of January. You know, it's been another month. And so far, things have been still kind of crazy. But, you know, I'm just glad to hear everybody is safe. No one is getting hurt. And that we're doing relatively well. Let's keep it up. And let's wash our hands. Keep safe. And just listen to our parents. And do things together with our family, okay? So I'm going to get today started, so let's close our eyes, bow our heads, and put our hands together, and I'll pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you for just being with us, Lord, and just protecting us, giving us the opportunity to learn more about you, Lord. I know things are kind of hectic, but Lord, we know that you will protect us, guide us, and you know help us get through. So Lord, um, we pray that you be with us, guide us. And let our hearts grow more fondly of you so that we could be better Christians and grow into the image you have for us, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. So last week I said that we're going to start a new series. All right. So that's what we're going to do today. So a series is just a collection, right, of things. So we're going to go with a specific theme. And this theme for this series is going to be people who met Jesus. All right. And I think it's very important because these people were everyday people, you know, like you, me or your parents, and they got to meet Jesus Christ in person. Isn't that awesome? All right, let's go ahead and start with the first person. So today who we're going to learn about is the Samaritan woman. We don't have a specific name for her. The Bible doesn't say, but we do know that she is a Samaritan, right? Now, if you guys remember, um, a Samaritan is a person from Samaria. And, you know, people from Judea, so people like Jesus, right, and the rabbis, things like that, they look down on all of the people from Samaria because technically they were ruled by the Assyrian Empire. So remember that huge army that threatened to destroy all of Israel? Yeah. Well, they basically took a portion of, you know, a Judaic area, and that was Samaria. And the people there, they're looked down upon because, you know, the Pharisees believe that, oh, you got taken over because God doesn't love you, which isn't true, right? He had to make that happen in order for more people to believe, right? And if you guys remember, we talked about the Good Samaritan, right? So we know that there are people from Samaria who are just true believers of God, but for some reason, Judaic rabbis, Pharisees, and Sadducees believed they were more important. Now, this is the woman that we're talking about, right? So there's a woman sitting at a well, right? She's just getting water, and Jesus walks up to her and goes, can you get me some water, right? So this is what the Bible says. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? And Jesus replied, if only if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. So first off, Jesus is already telling her like, one, you should know who you're talking to right now. And two, you should know what you should be asking me for. So she goes on and says, but sir, you don't have a rope or bucket. She said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? So she's right. With a well, you need a bucket and a rope or, you know, something long to reach into the well, right? Because the water is very deep underground. And she was saying, well, you don't have anything, so that means I have to do all the work because, well, I'm the only one that has the tools to get the water. And this is very much like our faith, right? By ourselves, we can't do anything. But because God gave us tools similar to a rope and a bucket, right, we can actually be with God, or we can actually communicate with God and take in the living water, right? 
So Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. So he's talking about the well water. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. So this water that Jesus keeps talking about, the living water, what do you think it means? Yeah, so we're not just talking about the blood of Christ, you know, the one we do for communion. But we're also talking about, you know, the word of God and the spirit. And we're also talking about the many blessings. So the water is not just one thing, but it's everything that Christianity is, right? It's everything that God and Jesus gave to us, right? And it says, please, sir, the woman, right? The woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come back here to get water. Go, get, go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. And Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. So, a little bit of context, or... Basically, I'm going to clue you in as to why this is important. Back then, you know, it was very important that you followed the laws of God to the T, right? And if you guys remember um, in like Deuteronomy and Leviticus, they were very strict about how a man and a woman are supposed to interact. And in this case, this woman was living with a man that she's not married to, meaning that she wasn't not living up to what the Bible tells us to do, right? Because it says you're not supposed to, a man and a woman aren't supposed to sleep together until they're married, right? But she's doing something else, right? And also she's had five husbands, right? The Bible actually speaks out against divorce. So she's divorced five different men and now she's on man number six. She's not looking like a very Christian or a good woman, right? So she says, sir, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worshipped? So now she's calling Jesus a prophet, right? It's a holy man. Do you guys remember this prophet? This is Isaiah, right? He is writing about the birth of Jesus Christ 800 years before Jesus is about to appear to the world, right? Now, she is calling Jesus the same as this man. Is that correct? No, right? She doesn't even realize that she's talking literally to the human form of God, the God that she worships and loves, right? And Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we, jo we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed, it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When He comes, He will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. So the woman left her village, right? Or left for her village, right? So it says, the woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. So this woman encountered the man form of God, the son of God, right? Jesus Christ. And, you know, she even knew about the prophecy about him. She said, there is a man named Christ who is going to come and save us. And Jesus was like, ta-da, it's me, right? And she didn't even realize that she was talking to the Messiah because he was, you know, just a person. 
he came down to earth to be one of us and show us that there is a way to be one with God. There is a way to be a perfect man. But at the same time, it's impossible because everything that Jesus did was something that we would see as impossible. But it doesn't change the fact that Jesus loved us so much that he came for us and even told a woman who was very sinful, right? She wasn't a very good, you know, Christian. But Jesus said, I came here for you and I'm talking to you because I want you to know the truth. And I want you to know that you can reach heaven and it doesn't have to be about what the Jews say or what the Samaritans say. It's not about that. What really matters is what Jesus Christ says, the, the one Messiah. And that's why this is such a very important thing. Because Jesus talks to us in, you know, very, very unique ways. Sometimes it might be with a friend. Sometimes it might be through TV, something. We don't know. But there's always Jesus trying to talk to us. And here, the woman didn't even realize she was talking to Jesus. And the same thing happens to us. We don't realize that Jesus is talking to us until like very, very later or towards the end. And then we realize Jesus was talking to us because we needed to hear something. Okay. All right. So this is the Samaritan woman, right? And we're going to learn about other people who got to meet Jesus and learn from him directly. All right. So that's it for today. Let's go ahead, close our eyes, bow our heads, put our hands together, and I'll pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for just teaching us about the Samaritan woman. Uh, we are very much like her. We are full of sin. Uh, we are just unaware of who you are at times. But Lord, we want to believe. We want to know you. We want to worship you, Lord. Deep within our hearts, we know that it is you who is the way, the truth, and the life, and that you are the living water that would grant us eternity, Lord. So I ask that we humble ourselves, that we surrender ourselves to you, and most importantly, Lord, that when you speak to us, that we listen, and that we take it to heart, and be filled with joy at the fact that you're talking to us, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. Continue to be with the children, be with their families, be with the church. But most importantly, Lord, be with the world, not just to heal them physically, Lord, and mentally and spiritually, but Lord, I ask that you give them faith. Let them be renewed in you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. Great job today, everybody. Um, I know it's kind of crazy out there right now, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. All right. We're almost there. So just keep pushing through. Okay. All right, guys. Be good. Bye.